Hello again, I'm Mario the Artisan Rogue, and today I'm talking about something called the Inktober. For those of you that aren't artists, it's something that an, art, an illustrator named Jake Parker started up a few years ago. And he's recently, in the last, I think it's three to four years, created these lists that cover the days of October. And so it's a thematic sort of drawing challenge is what it is. The idea is that you use traditional inks and you follow the prompts that he gives. Now, you're more than welcome to, you know, do as many or as few as you can. Um, you also end up with the option that you can also just participate in Inktober by making up your own list and your own requirements and guidelines and going from there. But I was looking over the list and there's like some really fun ones on there like Ghost, Ash, Legend, Freeze, Bait, Misfit, Tread, Injured, Dragon. Some great ones on there. There's a few on there like uh, the last one on the 31st day, Ripe not really sure what I'm going to do with that. What I'm hoping to do is kind of a maybe a fun horror or kind of Halloween sort of theme to it. I honestly wanted to try and do something where I was like, let me get them done. Last year I did try it and I only got like maybe one third of the way through, faltered a lot. And that happens to a lot of people that participate in doing this. I plan on recording all of them, then putting them up on YouTube for my own accountability. And so that I can feel like, okay, there's a reason why I'm doing these is because I need to go ahead and turn this around into something for YouTube. And then I'd have 31 videos in a row over the course of October. Let's, we'll see if I can actually manage to pull that off. Yesterday was the first day of autumn and it was freaking awesome. Today, hot again, welcome to Missouri. So you probably noticed that I've been producing more time-lapse videos on my YouTube channel. Most of that, I'm trying to figure out like, you know, like I've gotten great responses from people that really like watching them and that sort of thing. Some people have told me they'd like to see longer ones or maybe more intricate work done. That's going to be my hope. I'm thinking that more than likely it's going to be a mix between me doing live stuff on Twitch, which I'll get to that more in a second here, or just slowing down and not doing as many time lapses or doing a, a weird kind of morphing of both of them. So there'll be some time lapse in there, but then also some moments where I slow down and maybe talk about the techniques or what I'm utilizing to get the illustration finished up. I do have an account on Twitch. I don't have any content on there yet, but the goal was that which might actually end up being the first thing that happens with Inktober is live streaming each night to get one of these things created. That's probably more than I'm willing to invest in right now just because the amount of work to get that up, hoping to God that nothing goes wrong with the production of it and then getting it posted to YouTube the next day might be a little harrowing, but we'll see what ends up happening with that. I'm still unfamiliar enough with Twitch. Although I have all the setup and everything ready to go for it, I haven't really even done my layouts or anything else for the overall presentation point. So in other news for myself with writing, I had started doing more poetry writing and I've been actually doing these like kind of post-it note things where my entire desk here is laid out with a bunch of notes having to do with the art or book. The reason this is happening is because I had really struggled. I'm going to be open with you guys on this. I had struggled a lot whenever I was writing Pagan Zoetrope, my first comic book series, and I'd gone back and forth over how I was going to finish up some of the storylines, and I kind of wrote myself into a corner, and I wasn't sure how to proceed with some of the stuff that I had come up with. That was an unfortunate turn of events, and it really knocked me out of creating comics for a while, and I went through a whole bunch of, like, you know, moments of depression and stuff like that. I decided instead to go ahead and redouble my efforts and do something unique and different with Ardor. I say unique and different. What I mean is actually write the story out, see what the circle and the cycle is, and then stick to it and produce not just a series of comics, but an actual graphic novel. I'm hoping I can get this done over the next three to four months in time for the shows that are coming up in 2020. That's another goal that I've got set there. So for those of you that were asking about that, that's kind of the deal. The issue zero that's out right now, for those of you that don't know, I do have an issue zero. It's just a preview issue of art or it was a concept to see if anyone would even be interested in the world that I was creating. And that was, it's more or less still in that same, it's connected to what the work I'm doing now, but it has evolved over the, what now, two years ago that I first came out with that issue. So it's going, you know, it still has a lot of, you know, stuff in there that does carry over, but it was so early on because at that point in time I had written a storyline that was very rough. All of the art for Ardor started out as concept art for a video game that eventually became Ardor. And so that's what happened there. And so now I'm at a crossroads where I'm trying to unify everything and make it work. And 
I'm not joking. For those of you out there that are authors, oh my God, I have so much respect for you because I can't, ah, it's really insane trying to do all this sort of thing. I totally understand those like conspiracy theorists that have like pins of pictures and like thread going back and forth between everything. That's what I'm starting to feel like. These are questions from the last show. I got like one really cool email that was asking about um, what shows do I, no, I had a couple actually. The first one was, what shows do I plan on doing for 2020? I touched on this, I think, in the last video a little bit, but I applied for NakaCon. I'm planning on attending, uh, not attending, but actually doing Planet Comic Con. And then, of course, Free State every year in Lawrence, I like doing. As far as other shows, I'm still on the fence. I don't know. There's a couple I'm waiting to hear back on to see if I maybe got in. Okay, this next question was about Patreon. Yes, okay, so. <laughs> I did have a Patreon account, an active one that people did donate to for a while. I stopped because I felt that the overall quality of what I was able to produce for it was lacking. I'm just being totally honest on this. I don't know how people that do Patreon can afford to spend time doing that and creating content specifically for that. Even if it's time sensitive, so like, oh, you get it five days early on Patreon before everyone else sees it again on Facebook or YouTube or something like that. I just, I don't understand, you know, that. I, I often think that it has to be exclusive, exclusive. Even then, I even had some issues with how much I was charging and what I was charging. So I did make some decisions. I am going to reactivate it again and start promoting. And so the hope is that I'm just going to have one tier, just one at $1. You know, people may not care, like, you know, on my pens, what specific nibs or ink types or something I'm using. That's really not of interest to, you know, what I believe would be the most casual viewer. But if you're into art, if you're into that sort of thing, that's what's going to be on my Patreon. I really had to go back and look at it because there's a lot of people that do Patreon and it's fine. But when I'm getting, you know, posts that I'm like, well, you know, you would probably do this anyway normally. I felt that way about my own content. And I was like, I would be, I have been creating youtube videos and and blog posts for years i mean i started my website back when i was like 17 so and i'd been blogging since then and so you know that's something i always liked and that was well before patreon i recently went to the plaza art fair and uh it was a little bit humid for those of you that have never done shows you know this is one of the things that is a bane for any artist doing an outdoor fair the wind and the rain is horrible because you're not only fighting the elements but you know you're also dealing with the fact that you're not going to make a hell whole heck of a lot of sales during that time thankfully a lot of people stuck it out i saw them running up underneath like over you know overhangs and stuff like that and hanging out there with their umbrellas and stuff and waiting but it was some torrential rain on saturday it was ridiculous and i really i was feeling so bad for the artists because it's bad enough when you get to a show and you're setting up in the rain because that's hard it's sweaty you're in a hurry you're, you, people are jostling for like parking spots to get in there set up their tents get their stuff all the, in there and then getting out and finding a parking spot and getting ready for that first day of the show but then when you're in the middle of it and you're hoping like, okay now i can sit down i can talk to my fellow artists i can talk to the people that will hopefully come out and buy my stuff and it rains man there is no greater buzzkill that i can possibly think of for a creative person to deal with than mother nature just literally raining on your own parade and to add insult to injury thankfully i don't believe they had to go through this at the end of it if it rains and you have to tear down that's one of the most depressing things i can imagine i'm pretty sure the cure have written a song about that knowing that you did crap sales or that you just didn't do as much as you would have liked to or just the whole avenue of just having the rain come down on you and then packing up and putting stuff away in the rain because at some point your tent has to come down and then when you get home you're not done you can't leave anything it'll mold it'll get wet it's it's just the most depressing thing in the world and for some of these people they drove from out of state there was a few people there from california seattle washington dc that's insane and you know my my heart goes out to them because that was just crazy um in other kind of oddball <laughs> things that i saw i love robotics so i've got to share this video with you guys just take a look at this That's amazing. 
This is absolutely crazy. The thing that kept going through my mind was, it's not gonna be like Terminator. It's gonna be where you're gonna get a robot that's gonna do this, this, uh, you know, this, this killer routine before it does a routine killing. And I'm gonna meet my end to some gymnast robot in the future, uh, you know, over like a, a stale piece of bread or something. I, to see something like this, the reason I'm showing you guys this video is because this is art and technology and science. That's really stunning. So I don't know, take what you will from it, you know, let the Skynet jokes roll, but I think it's really pretty cool. So back to some stuff I've been doing, like recently, since I've been, a, I've become more and more obsessed with working in 3D. And uh, this here is a medallion that I have been working on. Now this little medallion is just, it's a rough art concept for one of the characters in the book I'm working on right now. I was struggling with trying to come up with the overall design for the medallion that one of the characters in there would be using. And so I thought, you know what? I, that's a really good exercise to work up in 3D, put it together and then output it and see what it looks like. See if it fits in my hand the way I think it would the characters. And I had never really done anything like that before. And it was incredibly refreshing to do. It kind of put me in a different mindset and I can't wait to paint it up and, and work on it and, and get some color concepts done that way. Yes, I could do it in two dimensions. Yes, I could make a three dimensional drawing and that sort of thing. But this was just for fun to see if I could actually do it. And it gives me a little sense of, you know, bringing the story to life ahead of time. It's a little bit of a just instant gratification moment for me that I wanted to give a shot to. If you guys have the ability to go and get any kind of 3D printing done of something like that, and you know something about 3D modeling or you're wanting to learn, utilizing your own work as a reason to do this is pretty fun and pretty legit, honestly. I can't wait to start sculpting some of the robots and some of the other things that occupy Ardor and printing them out and seeing if, what the designs would really look like. Because really, I've been designing them two-dimensionally in all my illustrations, and I do kind of wonder, like, what would this look like in 3D? In my mind, I see them in 3D, but they're, you know, based on shadow puppetry, so it's these big, hulking, ominous things. But I do wonder if that won't take away a little bit from the overall approach of what they look like. Thanks so much for watching and keeping up with these vlogs with me. These are just for fun sort of things where I get to blow a little steam off. I sincerely appreciate it. I hope the, the I hope the rest of the week goes good for you guys. And I will be back with another one of these probably in the first week of October. Talk to you then.